Welcome folks, I am Technivers. Today, if you have not seen it yet, this is Kira Arachne. This is Kira's Arachne engine built on the Arachne library and thus named. It is a totally new revamped engine for Kira using the same interface that Kira has always used. So we'll go ahead and take a look here and check the version just to take a look and hit what's new. And you can see here that there is a little blurb about the Kira team. So they're developing this and basically they only have Ultimaker machines. So they need people to download this and try it out on other machines and see how it works. And some of the main things to look at here are the new settings. So a variable line strategy and how walls are spread over the available space. So basically this is a setting determining which of those walls to print. Uh, the whole point of Arachne is to save you time and filament while leading to a more accurate model. So basically what's going to go on here is it's going to take small sections of things that it can print with extruding a little bit more filament out of the same size nozzle. And I can go ahead, let's grab a file. I'm on my other monitor here. We're over looking for just anything to pull in here. This should be a good one. Let's grab this. This is a fidget toy I did in my fidget spinner video that I did a little while back. And we'll just let it load up here. I have a lot of people, by the way, asking me how to do this rotation in Kira. All you gotta do is hold the right mouse button and drag and you can click around. If you um, hold shift and do it, you can pan the scene. That's helpful as well. And that doesn't just work in Arachne, it works in all of them. So. Um, zooming is going to be controlled by the wheel, of course. And let's go ahead and we will slice this up. Let's take a look at the settings it was talking about, though. And they're going to be up here in shell. There we go. Variable line strategy. Right now we're using inward distributed. So let's slice this. You may have seen some of this stuff before gone over in my previous Arachne video. But I just wanted to make sure that we're getting the word out about this software. It is only in its alpha development stage, meaning that it does have a long way to go. And that is one of the reasons, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That is one of the reasons that they're asking for your feedback. So one of the nice things about Arachne is you can install it and it'll install alongside your current version of Kira, meaning that you can run them both and not have to worry about losing any of your profiles or anything like that. I did not have any issues with it just pulling all of my profiles right into Arachne and being ready to go. And I've also used Kira 4.8 since then, and I haven't had any issues with it messing with my profiles there either. So, so far, so good. I've been pretty lucky. We've got this all sliced up now. Let's go ahead and take a look in the preview mode. And what we're looking for is one of these smaller features down here. So let's take a look at this wheel. And I think this should be a pretty decent spot to see what we're looking at. So as you look at the cogwheels on the spokes here for this gear, you can see that there are three lines. You can see that it's doing an outline with the first line that's gonna be your outer wall. And then it's doing a really sharp pinched line and another little line right behind it. But there is a tiny little gap in between each of these points as well as in between the wall and some of this other structure here so let's see if we change to center deviation if we can notice any immediate changes now we're going to stay on the same layer here um, we can scroll back down to it if we have to just give this a second to slice and we'll kind of compare the pathing now i've noticed that arachne's pathing is pretty accurate and a little bit quicker than 4.8 and in one of my other videos I did do a comparison showing those side by side I don't feel that that's necessary at the moment um, as you can see this is relatively close to the other one we're not really seeing any variation in those nubs like I thought we would but then again we would see that variation if we had this same model in 4.8 so I think maybe we'll pull it in we'll do another side by side real quick Again, I don't want this video to get too long. I basically just want to make sure that everybody's aware that this software is out there because if you could go ahead, grab yourself a copy of it, download it, play around with it, compare your print times on some objects to the, say, 4.8 version, and also the amount of filament that you use. I've noticed I'm saving a little bit of filament as well because in some instances, for example, you can say it's putting down two layers, or excuse me, it'll... it'll 
It's hard to describe without showing you. I got Ultimaker 4.8 opening up here, so in just a second we'll drag this model into there as well, and I will show you what we're talking about here. And uh, let's see, here it goes. Nope, not just yet. Okay. So, um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about while we are discussing Kira is the fact that they do iterate really, really quickly. So, I haven't spoken to the gentleman that sent me this link since a couple days after I posted my first video. Uh, but basically, I'm curious to see if Kira 4.9 is going to be released in beta soon or if they're just waiting until they can release this alpha, this alpha in a beta version and just switch to Arachne altogether. All right, so I have Kira 4.8 here. Let's put that there. Let's see. This doesn't wanna. I should have been better prepared for this. We'll do it this way. Come on. Wow, you're being extremely difficult right now, Kira. All right, you go back over there. Let's get this fidget keychain in here. And well, we're on layer 22. So this is Kira's standard engine. Uh, as you see, it is taking a little bit longer to load my model. There we go, let's slice that up. We can close this and close this. We're pretty much just looking by eye here. So we'll give 4.8 a second to slice it. Um, I have noticed with some models the slicing in Arachne is faster. I have noticed with some models it is really, really long. So if you have something that's really overly complicated... Um, okay, so here is our first example. In this case, we're using... We're printing 2 hours and 4 minutes. In this case, we're printing in 2 hours and 13 minutes. You'll also notice there is a difference here in the amount of filament. Now, I didn't maintain the settings. I didn't check the settings in here to make sure that this was printing a raft as well. And I'm assuming some of that is going towards the raft. So let's go back to prepare. We'll select this model. Let's go. We'll just put the raft on just to be sure. And slice it one more time. Um, now, that seven-minute difference you saw may not seem like much, but it is actually quite a bit. It does add up over time over several models and on a bigger model it can be an even more drastic change than just seven minutes so keep that in mind now here we go we're back in here and that's about right it's using the exact same amount of filament 14 grams or 4.80 millimeters or meters so that um, was definitely what the issue was for the, the the difference you're not saving any filament using arachne here you are saving ooh, in this case with that raft added we are saving 22 minutes printing with arachne so imagine that extrapolated out over several large models and you begin to see how much time you're actually saving I'm gonna get down to 22 here and get a close look at this structure here okay as you can see we're using two different infill patterns as well um, other than that, the settings are looking mostly the same other than this case right here where you're seeing this thin yellowing line on the Arachne version. Now, if we go up a layer or two, and you're not seeing that start to appear there. And I'm not sure what that is. But keep in mind, it's doing all this. That's probably a really thin line, um, maybe some connecting tissue or something like that, because it's using the same amount of filament, but it's also adding this internal structure here as well. So um, some very, very interesting things. I implore you, please check this out. Kira is dying for feedback. The sooner they get more people testing this, the sooner we can get a beta version, and the sooner we can get on to an actual version, because I think that this is the future of slicing. Basically, you're going to extrude a different line width depending on which part of the model you're printing. Say a tip right here, it's going to extrude slightly less. Or instead of printing three lines in this direction, maybe it can print two lines that are slightly wider and cover the same area with a little more precision. So it's taking all those calculations into consideration and you're getting a really, really, really quality slicer. Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivorous. 
Well, that's it guys. That's gonna wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.